The early access accessible combat flight simulator Nuclear Option got one of its most significant patches to date recently bringing with it a radical new aircraft, new weapons, enhancements to the existing game and a much requested game changing option. In this video we're breaking down the content of patch 0.27 and what it means for the game from here on. First out the gate then let's talk new weapons. Added to Nuclear Option in 0.27 you'll now find the PAB250 and PAB80LR. The PAB250 is an optically guided freefall bomb that carries a 441 pound explosive warhead and is ideal for destroying heavily armoured vehicles and small buildings. The PAB80LR is likewise optically guided and carries a smaller warhead at 176 pounds of TNT but the LR I'm guessing stands for long range. Whilst the ATLR is technically a bomb after launch it deploys a set of small wings and when launched from altitude means it's nuclear options first true glide bomb. As it has no thrust of its own it comes with no heat signature and features a very small radar cross section making its approach very hard to detect. Next up is the GPO2P Auger. The Auger is a bunker busting precision guided bomb that comes with a whopping 1764 pounds of TNT in its warhead. It's specifically designed to penetrate hardened structures and then explode them from the inside out. Next up another first for nuclear option the ARAD116 the games first anti radiation weapon. For the uninitiated anti radiation has nothing to do with the games titular nuclear ordnance but is rather specifically designed to target surface radar emissions. The missile can be fired targeted to a known radar source for a more conventional attack or it can be dumb fired and will lock onto any detected enemy radar after launch. This method of attack has the advantage of allowing the weapon to be fired from significant distances or in some cases from behind terrain, shielding the launching aircraft from attack by the very SAM unit it's seeking to destroy. The new weapons are all a welcome addition to the game and present more effective task specific options for the player. The existing arsenal of familiar weapons has also been upgraded and improved however in a few key areas making them all much more effective. The AGM-48 and 68 missiles for example will perform some minor evasive manoeuvres on their way to a target making them harder to defend against. This has the effect of seriously alleviating the games previous propensity towards spamming missiles at a particularly troublesome target in order to ensure that at least one missile gets through. The key headliner for the patch however is without a doubt the new aircraft. And in a patch already delivering many firsts for the game the new EW25 Medusa doesn't disappoint in that area either. Not only is the Medusa the first Stovall short takeoff vertical landing aircraft to enter the battle space but it's also the games first dedicated support aircraft. Whilst it can be very effective in the anti air defence role particularly when wielding the aforementioned ARAD anti radiation missile it comes with a suite of electronic warfare systems that allow it to pinpoint enemy radar positions and importantly jam those same radar emissions blinding the enemy to an incoming attack. The Medusa still isn't done with firsts however. It can also wield a high energy laser weapon capable of shooting down missiles in flight. There doesn't yet appear to be a specific reason why the Medusa is Stovall capable but it's important to remember that the game is still in early access and its developer has hinted previously that carrier based operations could be in nuclear options future so it could be that we'll see that particular feature of the Medusa come into its own further down the line. As well as some welcome graphical refreshes to weapons and terrain, some bug fixes and AI tweaks the 0.27 update also introduced the very welcome indeed implementation of head tracking in the form of support for the track IR unit specifically. I have heard of at least one instance of a player using the Toby eye tracker successfully in the game as well. No two ways about it, head tracking in nuclear option is an absolute game changer as it is in most games in which it's implemented. 
This initial implementation of the feature has already granted the ability to much more easily target an asset on the battlefield just by looking in its direction, particularly useful when you're flying perpendicular to something that very much wants you dead. But also identifying a runway for landing, damage assessment flypasts or the simple joy of watching a nuke land all have a new level to them. Hot on the heels of 0.27 and the arrival of the Medusa the game is far from resting on its laurels however. The games developer B25Mitch is already posting work in progress images of the next aircraft to enter the game. A new highly manoeuvrable multi role fighter. Have you tried the new EW25 Medusa? What's your favourite of the new weapons added in 0.27 and what feature would you most like to see added next? Let us know in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this video be sure to like and subscribe so YouTube shows you all our content and if you'd like to support our work here at the Burr Pit you can also join our Patreon. Links to that and everything we've talked about in this video you'll find linked below. That's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. We very much look forward to seeing you next time.